Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good day. Welcome to our devotion. Today we will speak about praying without ceasing. Praying without ceasing. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 18. We're starting from verse 1. This is Jesus speaking these words. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Then he went further, verse 2, to say, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Jesus Christ uh, relating a story of uh, always praying. You know, uh, this thing of always praying requires faith. It's impossible for us to pray without ceasing and not have faith in God. So, in this parable, the widow's request was just relentless. We speculate what the widow's case was. What did she want to be avenged of? But I have a lot of sympathy for this widow in living in those times where if you're a widow, I'm assuming she also maybe didn't have kids. Probably life was tough for her. Maybe there are people that just did something and she just needed restitution and justice. And there was only one person who could give that to her. And this was this particular judge. And, uh, and this man just feared not God and regarded no man. I, I thought a judge should give justice. But in this particular case, this man who was a judge says, I don't fear God and I don't have any regard for men. I wonder what type of sentences he was passing but because of the persistency of the widow uh, he felt obliged uh, that he needed um, to give a just sentence uh, because it says lest by a continual coming she worry me and and so she he finally decided that well i will avenge her the judge gave in to that request because of the relentless of the widow the issue for us is not that we do not pray. Jesus says, men ought always to pray in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. So it's not that men ought to pray because men pray. But here men ought always to pray. So, so we find ourselves that we pray, but we don't pray all the time so the call is to pray always and for those that find themselves that they are praying all the time or they are always praying and the second qualification and not faint so Jesus says that men ought always to pray and not faint so, so we can pray all the time but we find that we, we tired. we've been praying for the same thing now. It's year one, it's year two, uh, year three, maybe we're still there. Year four, we, we're forgetting about it. Um, year five, we've stopped altogether uh, to pray about it. So Jesus Christ is saying, no, pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. So we find ourselves that we pray for various things, at various points, 
but we don't pray consistently all the time. That when we pray, we must not get weary. We must not get to a point where we say that, you know what, uh, I've, said my, I've stated my case. I've said all that I needed to say to God. It's now in God's hand. I'm leaving it with God. Uh, Jesus Christ says here we need to plead all the time. And so took a very uh, a beautiful uh, story, a very beautiful parable of how this widow needed consistently to go to a judge. I don't know to the widow whether she felt that the judge would listen to her or the judge would not listen to her, but she felt that she needed to go to the judge every day and say, avenge me of mine adversary, avenge me. And so finally she, she found justice. Some of us go through uh, challenging things in our lives. Mm -hmm. Some of us are, have chronic ailments. We find that we have prayed to God and, and asked God to, to help us um, and we felt uh, getting a little bit better and, and, and praying to God to, to help us. Um, and it's been years and, and we have forgotten. Only when the pains get stronger do we, uh, do we remember, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm still praying for, uh, for, for this ailment. Men ought always to pray and faint not. Ah, children. Uh, children can be uh, very difficult. Um, we love our children, their blessing in our, our families. But we don't pray for them all the time. We don't pray for them all the time. Sometimes we may find ourselves praying for them because they're getting into trouble. Men ought always to pray and faint not. Our church environment for uh, some of us may uh, may not be well. Very strange that a church environment may not be well. But how often do we pray for our churches that God needs to be there to pray always without fainting? Some of us work for uh, bosses that we think they are less than pleasant. And uh, with these very less than pleasant uh, bosses, they, they create an environment um, which uh, for us is really not um, conducive um, for us to, uh, to work in. And we've been there uh, frustrated and, uh, and all we want to do is, is to leave. Uh, we've prayed about it, we've asked our friends to pray about it, um, and we're done. Um, and we're not on our knees uh, all the time uh, asking for God to help us, asking for God to be with us in the situation that we're in. Men ought always to pray and faint not. And the reason why we sometimes faint, we, we expect a speedy response uh, to our prayers. We, we expect God to step in uh, right then and then because we have cried uh, unto him. So we have to trust in the providences uh, of God. We have to pray in Jesus' name and, uh, and Jesus uh, counsels us to, to pray in his name. Reminded of a, of a lady, his name is uh, Hannah, who went to the temple to pray. Hannah prayed and prayed and really the priest uh, thought what is happening here? Is this, is this woman drunk? Uh, she says, no, uh, no, she's, she was praying and praying. And God granted her her request. And when God granted her a request, God blessed her uh, with a child. And she named that child uh, Samuel. And, and she dedicated Samuel uh, to the service of the Lord. She, she brought him up well. And after a time, took him back to the temple and Samuel as we know became um, one of the greatest judges in, in Israel but Hannah prayed she continued to pray and God uh, granted her her prayer see we don't pray for self gratification uh, Hannah's prayer was, was not for her self gratification Hannah's prayer was for God's glorification. And that is why we 
can have the confidence then of saying, let your will be done. Now, now, if you're praying for, for your own self-gratification, it's now very difficult to leave everything to God and say, God, let your will be done. Uh, we have had this uh, many a times with uh, young men or, or even young ladies looking for a life partner. When they are praying and they are asking God for a life partner uh, while they are doing it with... Uh, but someone, let's just hope, only one person in mind. Um, so, so they're praying and, uh, and asking for this particular person. Uh, many of them don't say, but Lord, let your will be done, because they believe, oh, what if, what if God's will uh, is to give me someone who, who I don't like? Uh, so we have reduced uh, uh, God because we pray for our own self-gratification, to someone who is not looking after our own best interest. Now, as Jesus Christ was um, going to be crucified, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with uh, his disciples. He was there with, uh, with Peter, he was there with John, and he told them to watch and pray. They fell asleep. Jesus went and prayed. Just came back, told them to watch and pray. Uh, they fell asleep. I think these disciples depict us when we are being called to watch and pray, we are found sleeping. When Jesus Christ prayed, he said, if this cup may not pass from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Because he had confidence, in the love of God. He did not, he not see, did not see God as some uh, tyranny. But he also told the disciples that they must watch and pray lest they fall into temptation. So we, we, we have to pray not just only for the things that we would want God to bless us with, but we ought to always uh, watch and pray so that we don't fall into temptation because the spirit may be willing but the flesh may be weak but we have to pray so that God can strengthen us so so praying without ceasing requires faith Noah had uh, this type of faith that is required in God can you imagine uh, living many years and having been told that there's going to be a flood and uh, it's not rained uh, rain has never been seen and you have faith in God and you execute what God says that you need to do Abraham had this type of faith when being told to leave his land where he's living in and uh, to go to a foreign land for, for him the best place that he could be was the place where God told him to go to he had faith. So later on in the Luke chapter 18, Jesus Christ asked a question. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man shall come, shall he find faith on earth? So, so this story of this widow who is relentless, asking uh, the judge to avenge her, uh, uh, is a story also of faith. It's just not the story of always praying. Because you can't always pray and not faint if you do not have faith. Moses had faith. Many people that we can list in the Bible who had faith. Now the question that I have for you today is that do you have faith in the providence of God? Do you have faith that what I am praying for, God will see me through? I may not have the answer right now as to how God will see me through. But I believe that God is hearing me and that God will see me through. So you see, see, if we don't have that faith, then we can't pray for our ailments because we don't trust God that God will give us even the strength or the power to be well. Don't let the devil 
to cloud your faith. Don't let the devil to bring doubt unto you. Don't, don't listen to him when he says that God is not hearing you. Don't listen to him when he says that your prayers will not be answered. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not faint. My prayer for you today is pray always and not faint. Amen.